just to try and give you some broad uh, broad based thresholds I guess the the first two boxes um, broken broken the crop development down into vegetative uh, obviously pre-flowering and then uh, flowering um, the pre-flowering and the flowering scenarios you'd be well aware of from uh, some long established uh, thresholds provided by DAFA and also our SARDI. Um, I guess the, uh, the situation around the vegetative uh, in, uh, impacts of DVM in the vegetative phase is somewhat uh, new in this regard. Um, last year, certainly patches of esperance and whatnot, there was very heavy pressure early on. Um, so I guess the in discussion with Svet, um, I guess the, the, the breakdown in that regard would be whether the crop is, uh, is likely to survive the impact of the DVM or whether the uh, DVM is likely to um, overrun the crop. In the scenario of, a, of the crop being able to grow through, um, clearly the management or, or uh, monitoring is, is still going to be required and, and very much necessary, but um, clearly where the uh, DVM are likely to overrun the crop, then, then, then an application of a uh, effective insecticide is going to be warranted. The, uh, as I said, the, the thresholds for application later on in the season are pretty well understood. Um, obviously there's a uh, still a little bit of work to go with regards to um, our change in canola systems and intensities and, and, and what we can deal with but I suppose the other two uh, pieces to be aware of outside of that are obviously um, bacterial um, decimation if you can put it that way of the, uh, the DBM populations rainfall and mild temperatures are obviously key in that regard and finally um, the final uh, I suppose, piece of the decision matrix is also the temperature as you're heading into winter, especially those early season infections heading into winter, the uh, DBM life cycle extends extraordinarily and uh, it's quite a, uh, can have quite a dramatic impact on, on the effect they'll have. So broadly speaking, yes, there's a, a grub intensity, but there's also obviously rainfall and, and temperature interactions that we need to be aware of. Um, I'll touch on the control options for DVM that are registered or uh, well, there's permits in place for at this point in time, um, acknowledging that there's obviously some movement in this um, insecticide segment. Um, I've classified SPs in this regard as green for go, uh, assuming that, the, um, that they are, are likely to be effective on the particular population you're dealing with. Um, that'll be very much a suck and see approach and I, and I guess there are, um, courtesy of SARDI, there are some um, uh, testing programs in place which if you are uncertain, if you have got early season DBM pressure, uh, you can get it, certainly get them um, checked. Uh, just skipping through to methamyl, now I guess there's, there's been a lot thrown through, thrown around the countryside last year. It's just worthwhile touching on methamyl's uh, specialty I guess use in terms of um, activity on, on eggs as an oversight. It's also quite effective on the first instar, which is actually internal for the leaf of the, of the canola plant. But once you get past the second, uh, second instar stage, it will start to drop away quite quickly. BT's the uh, flip side. Um, obviously, second instar is highly effective. Third instar can be quite effective, but by the time you get through to the fourth instar stage, it's, it's quite effective. Um, then obviously, just jumping back to a firm, uh, firm's quite robust on those larger grubs, but also has, has the ability to pick up those first instar uh, bugs as well. And lastly, second last slide, um, just briefly mentioning some of the um, toxicities too. Um, I've thrown OPs into this mix as well, given that they're commonly tank mixed, but um, I guess uh, in discussion with Greg, Baker and, and Svet and a few others, uh, they, they're not really recognised as having genuine activity on, on DBM. So I've thrown them in here as a, because of their impact uh, on beneficials and because of their likelihood of tank mixing. Uh, you can see quite a, quite a uh, good fit for BT in the, um, in the I, IPM uh, systems. It's also <coughs> worthwhile just drawing, uh, drawing attention to the relative um, relative uh, toxicities of the other active ingredients. So lastly, um, 
DVMs are digital based, obviously, to, um, to assess, not so much unlike um, um, some of your, um, some of the other LEPs. It has a quite a, you're very likely to find a number of different growth stages in the paddock all at once. So when you are sweeping, well and truly worthwhile assessing what actually, the actual growth stages you are um, seeing in the paddock, try and understand which of those um, products and which of the mixes of those products are likely to be working. Um, so the number of grubs as well as the uh, growth stage. Secondly, yeah, where is the crop at and what's it likely to be doing from that point in the season then thirdly, and that also includes um, obviously temperature influences on the grubs. And finally, um, try to, as best as you can, and I've been a broad activist and get a handle on uh, the number and type of predatory pests that you're out. Um, if, there's, if they're building, then, uh, then obviously you've got, some, you've got an asset you can, you can choose to be well preserved. Uh, and then finally, you can choose the management option that suits the current scenario. So.